Hello YouTube. Welcome back to Nutkin Farm. It's a nice summer's day in January 2023 and I thought I'd come take you for a little walk around block one um, of my orchard and um, for those of you who know the channel block one is um, my pet block for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them is that it's it's the best performing block and has been for a couple of years. But if you look up and down these rows here you look at what should be fairly, well, well they look like fairly young trees. Most of them in fact aren't. And the story behind this is that in about 2006, when the original owners were pre preparing the property for sale, they wanted this paddock planted and they got it planted with baby trees then before selling it in 2008. Um, I've since worked out which contractor planted the block because I wanted to find out what varieties he'd planted and um, that was Phil Tully and um, I rang him up and Phil said mate the owner said fill it full of macadamia trees and so I filled it full of macadamia trees <laughs> he couldn't tell me what varieties they were they're a mix of them clearly and some of them we still can't work out others other trees have a bit of a signature telltale sign uh, that makes it easy to work out what they are now the next owner took over, tried to farm biodynamically and despite the best of intentions biodynamic farming has a lot more what you can't do than what you can do and what you can do is often impractical. Um, as a result um, the trees struggled and uh, some of them didn't survive leaving gaps in the orchard. So that when I came to take over in 2019 and started farming conventionally again and feeding the trees they took off but what you're looking at here is effectively adolescent trees that are actually a lot older than they look and what I did in the meantime since I couldn't work out what the variety of the trees were I said well look this can be my experimental block and I filled it with my own plantings like this 835 here to experiment with a number of varieties that are in some cases new in some cases lost to cultivation they were tried earlier and then sort of weren't successful but based on my research probably hadn't been given much of a fair go so I thought well there's gaps in the orchard um, whether they make nuts for me or not is something I can live with but certainly if you just leave it as grass you won't get any nuts from the grass so that's how I've planted block one and it's become a bit of a favorite this year the crop on block one is looking good. I'm sure these trees are well cross-pollinated because there's at least 10 different varieties of macadamia in the one block and that's, uh, that's a lot. Um, but the trees are fairly happy. But um, if you were to plant a macadamia block from scratch like the original owner of Nutkin Farm did with this block and you're actually paid some attention to what varieties you wanted planted how would you feel if I came up to you and said you know normally trees will take about eight years to crop but if you let me design it I'll give you an orchard that will give you commercial crops within three years now half of you might well say beauty mate go ahead and do it and the other half might say well what's the catch well, back in the 80s, people were saying exactly that when um, Hidden Valley Plantations, an Australian macadamia breeding um, organisation, came out with these varieties, which they called the A varieties, A for Australia, presumably. These were varieties where they'd taken old um, varieties of macadamia integrifolia which is the one used in all the previous Hawaiian varieties or most of them and then they blended it with a different species macadamia tetraphylla and what they got was macadamia trees that would flower very strongly and start cropping very early and particularly in respect of, of the one of the originals A4 it could produce a commercial crop within three years and of course that was great news to anyone in the industry who wanted a return on investment you know less than eight years ahead 
There are plenty of people who are quite happy to wait the eight years, including those using it for tax purposes. But for people who wanted to raise an income, the idea of a precocious macadamia, one that would crop early, was like a siren song. Now, looking around the orchards in the northern rivers, it's very rare that you'll see one that went over completely to the A varieties to try and get a fast crop. What you'll find is that most of them put them in the mix somewhere. So they did a paddock of them or they, they interplanted some of the traditional varieties that they knew performed with some of the new experimental varieties and spread the risks. So there's a difference in approach there. Very few people went the whole hog. And so that seemed to work. I mean, the people who planted these A varieties were getting crops within a few years. And as a bonus, they were bigger nuts. They had higher kernel recovery, that is thinner shells and more nut. And they were getting paid great premiums for their nut by the nut processors, who of course are interested in the kernel, not the shell. And so that all seemed good. But later down the track, what they found was that these A varieties um, particularly the A4 and the A16, would crop well for about 10, 12 years, and then things would start to get worse. You'd see um, yields declining, the tree would be dying out a little bit, um, it didn't look healthy anymore, uh, and the tree required quite disproportionate amounts of food in terms of you know, just normal fertiliser to produce a crop, whereas the older varieties that had come from Hawaii, the Integrifolia varieties, would just sort of keep chugging on more reliably for, you know, 20, 30 years and have, um, you know, certainly less input costs. Um, I can give you an example of an A4. Now, this one, because it's in block one, was starved like the rest of them, so it's a little bit still of an adolescent tree. I featured this tree back in spring when I showed you all the flowers hanging down like festoons from, from this tree. And I warned you at the time that it was bragging rights only. See, all these racemes here were covered in flowers and they're all over the tree. But only some of those have converted into nuts, as you can see. There's one, sometimes two nuts on a stem. Now, if you look all over the tree and say, well, what kind of a crop is it? You go, well, look, it's not too bad a crop anyway. The nuts still need to size up a bit, and I don't know that they necessarily will. But look at all that wasted flour that didn't pollinate for whatever reason, hasn't turned into nuts. That became typical of an adult A4, not so much the junior ones, which were rock stars. And so, the lure of early bearing varieties involving macadamia tetraphylla um, subsided a bit because people got burned. Those varieties weren't so good. But Hidden Valley plantations did persist and they introduced a few newer varieties like um, the A203, which seems to perform a bit better over time, and the A268, where sort of people have very varying views. Then, of course, in fast forward to about 2015 and we have the rush the gold rush where everyone wants to grow macadamias they want to get a crop on as quickly as possible and um, cash in on these wonderful prices that we were being paid and so the interest in precocious varieties came back in a big way the industry responded and in the macadamia variety trials uh, version 3 so RVR RVT3 I think it is um, one of the, the the biggest sort of focuses were on the sort of things that the A4 did give us in the first place, which is high kernel recovery and early bearing, and of course production. Now they're a bit more cautious this time, and they tested the varieties over a longer period, but they came out with um, some varieties and and said these ones will be precocious, um, and um, the the main precocious new varieties that they're offering to the industry in 2022 are varieties P, G, J, and there's also MCT1. Those are the ones that are advertised as being precocious sort of early croppers. Um, I've had a couple of all of those varieties put in just as a bit of an experiment. Um, and 
I haven't seen too much evidence of it being precocious, although I have one MCT1 with a few nuts on them, and I have one macadamia pea right here with some nuts. Now, you wouldn't call that a commercial crop, it's just a few nuts, um, but it's impressive on one level because, you know, it's only been about two years in the ground. It was a big specimen when I planted it, but it's actually getting a little bit of crop. Should we trust the industry this time and, and trust these varieties that are precocious to keep producing past their 10th and whatever year? Now, they're encouraging us to trust them. Um, they, they say they've been, you know, in testing in total for about 20 odd years. Um, the information on them does change a little bit though, and I sense there's a little bit of politics behind some of the advice to growers. Initially, there were these four varieties brought out by Horde Innovation, G, J, R and P. They said G works anywhere, J works anywhere, R's good for the northern rivers, although it's not precocious, and P works best in Bundaberg. Um, they then changed that advice in the recent Macadamia Journal and admitted that J was really only good for Bundaberg too. Uh, and so, yeah, they've taken away that recommendation that it will do well anywhere. Interestingly, because I look at things historically, when they put out the first drafts of these fact sheets, they said that J was for Bundaberg. And I wonder whether there was some balancing out to try and uh, make the Northern Rivers people not feel like they've been left behind. <laughs> Anyway, um, if you're considering Variety J, that's your updated information. Apparently not so good in the Northern Rivers, but, um, you know, who knows, who knows. But anyway, there was also some academic study that came out in 2018 from a bunch of Queensland academics, and it's really pretty interesting. They looked at a whole swathe of macadamia breeds to see what it was that made some varieties bear early, um, and others not. And they went through, it was really, you know, quite an extensive operation, but what they found, and I'm going to list some numbers for you, and I'm, I'm sorry if they're bewildering or boring to you, but those of you in the industry who know these varieties will recognise some of them at least. So the precocious varieties they found, in not any particular order, included the 344660 791, I'll come back to that, 814 and 842. And, and in Hawaii, the Hawaiian breeding program wasn't based on how fast the trees cropped. It was very much focused on what made the best nuts. Um, and um, it's a shame that we're not really adopting the same focus in my view, but anyway, um, they, out of the A's, they found basically every A variety was precocious. Uh, and that's really the, the breeding emphasis and a result of the breeding emphasis from tens of thousands of seedlings that the Bell family in Hidden Valley plantations have operated on. Um, interestingly, of the new A varieties that have just come out, the one they singled out as being particularly precocious was A538, which looks in every respect like the A4. So, and what they discovered as well is that the, how early a tree crops depends, it's correlated very closely with how intensely the tree flowers. So we know from what I've just shown you that the A4 flowers very intensely, um, but other intense flowering varieties like the 814 um, also um, flower very intensely too and crop early. And it's interesting that so many of these fast cropping varieties are behind these new varieties that we have. So P, for example, and J both have A16 as a parent. Um, and, you know, uh, Dada also has a reason, it's reasonably precocious. It's one of the parents of variety G. But is that what we should be looking for? The um, other interesting thing that they're recommending for future breeding, these academics, is the variety called 791. Not only was that precocious, but it was also an absolute mystery of a macadamia variety because it has partly macadamia turnifolia, a species never used 
in macadamia breeding before no one knows how it got into the breed it was bred in hawaii there's no record of anyone taking macadamia turnifolia over to hawaii to meddle with and yet suddenly this variety comes out strange looking tree really straggly but it did produce pretty well and the nuts didn't have the unfortunate trait of macadamia, macadamia turnifolia which is they've got cyanide in the nuts um, apparently that's a recessive when bred with other varieties so it's safe to eat macadamia 791 it just didn't do very well after a few years again it was a precocious tree but it didn't do all that well in the long term and so this group of academics has said well look why don't you consider that for at minimum for biodiversity but also for potentially breeding new fast cropping macadamias so with that knowledge if i ask you the question again do you want a fast cropping block or do you want to go with something slower but potentially better over time would your answer change um mine would i i think yeah, if you're thinking longer term you probably don't want to put many of your eggs into the fast cropping basket um, until a lot of the varieties are proven over sort of 20, 30, 40 years, which is, you know, definitely well within the lifespan of a macadamia farm. There are older varieties as well, which sort of have been overlooked, where the longer term performance of them has turned out to be really good as the tree matures and that you don't really get it to hit its straps until it's about 20 years old by which stage the trials are all over. Now I don't know what this variety is but I'd be happy to grow more of that. Those are beautiful. And um, so it, it's going to be interesting to see what people prioritise now that the gold rush is over and the desire to have a crop in the quickest possible time might be a little bit calmed by the price reduction and people might start thinking longer term about well okay what gives me money in three years but what can keep giving me money in 20 years without causing a major headache so think about that if you're planning an orchard or even if you're buying an existing orchard if that existing orchard contains a high degree of A varieties, go have a look at them. Um, if they've been pruned on a fairly regular basis, you know, that is one way to keep them producing at some rate. Um, you know, the best way with those tetraphylla based trees, if they perform well when young, if you can make them feel young again, uh, the chances are you might make them perform a little bit better again. Otherwise, if you're looking at the, you know, the old tried and true Hawaiians, um, look, it depends on the variety very much, and I have plenty of other videos addressing that kind of analysis, so don't, uh, I'm not going to go over that again. However, um, at best, you want a mix of those varieties, and you don't want to bet your whole farm on MCT1 or GJ. P and even R which isn't precocious but it's the one I've picked as my favorite of the new varieties um, give them a go by all means but don't plan an orchard based on them and, and don't um, don't of course you bank your dollars before they come in because the price environment is a very tricky one for the next year or two so that's my update for the moment guys i uh have the grass nice and neatly mown for this uh for this video but in a couple of weeks it's going to look a whole lot longer again that's just the time of the year we're in and we are getting the odd showers of rain that will no doubt fuel the fire but of course also fuel the trees thankfully so i will wish you well and see you again soon bye for now